How's it going guys? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Um, doing something a little different today. Oh, first and foremost, go like this video for the YouTube machine. Um, we're doing something a little different today. We're deep dropping, which you've seen before, but we're going to do it hand crank style. I've got the electric here. Um, we're gonna use it just to locate some fish, find a good spot where fish are biting so we're not dropping this down and having to reel it up by hand a hundred times. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to do. I've got uh, some friends here. Madeline, you know her, and some new ones. Melanie, good friend of ours and good friend of mine, CEO and owner of Apex Line Clearance. If you need a tree cut down in North Texas, mm -hmm. that is your guy, you call him. <laughs> but um, let's get to it. We're gonna fish for tiles first. Um, I'm gonna show you what I use. These are 11-0 uh, Circle Hucks by Mustad. Um, this is not a commercial trip. We're not gonna keep a commercial quantity. Um, and I'll tell you, if you're fishing recreationally, it's, in my opinion, I think you should fish for the smaller species first, like the tiles and stuff, because you can have more of them. Um, if you hook one snowy, you're done for the day. So I, I fish with the small hooks first. Uh, these are 11 O's, these are hand tied rigs. Uh, this is 80 pound mono, and uh, we're gonna fish on this uh, with 60 pound fluorocarbon. These are just hand tied. Um, 16 ounces of lead since we're doing it hand crank style. This is a Shimano 25 Beastmaster two speed. I actually just got these, so I wanted to try them out in the deep water. But um, we're gonna locate some fish and drop some down. Hopefully uh, hand crank some tiles, maybe a snowy, it'd be pretty cool. Let's rock and roll. All right, so we have located some fish on our first spot. Um, like I said, this is a tile spot. This is just, there's not much here. It's a little crack right there. You can barely see it, but there's a ball of life on it, 580 feet. Uh, we pulled up one nice blue line with the electric reel, so it's time. We're gonna put the uh, the hand crank setup down there. Let's go. All right. First bait going down. You get one, babe? I can't even tell if he's on there or not. I definitely had a bite. Yeah. That's a fish. Yeah! Oh, he came off. You gotta be kidding me. There he is. It don't matter. I just wanna, woo! Oh yeah, I can tell one's on there now. Only 500 more feet. <laughs> Plus like 70. Off the bottom. I see color. You! Yay! Hand Blue line tile from 600 feet. All right, Clayton, you're up. Oh, bro. Let her go. I'm not gonna lie, that whooped my butt. You wanna be kinda lower so when you reel, you can pull up at the same time. You'll feel the thump if he's there. Is that a bite? Is he on there? Looks like it. Here, put that, uh... He's still on there? Yeah. So crank like that as long as you can, and then... Nice! And then when you, if you get tired, you can sit in the rod holder. <laughs> so that bite was pretty quick. Yeah. The only thing with these is you'll slowly have to wind it with your thumb. Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. No level wind. <laughs> if you've never done this, this is pretty exhausting. It's quite the challenge. 
about halfway up, you really start to feel it in your bicep. Madeline's up next. You getting prepped with your Lay's potato chips? Yep. <laughs> I actually wanted to be the first Texan to do this, but whatever. Whatever. Sorry. <laughs> Man, my left bicep hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get tired, put it in one of these angled rod holders. Take that butt off. <laughs> Pretty impressed with these reels though. It's the first time I've tried it with these, the two speeds, the Shimano's. I don't know. Gotta be getting close. If y'all are uh, tired with it, then I don't think I can do you it. You gotta try it. You got it, babe. Come on. Okay. All that smack Wait. talk. Here it comes. I got color. Ooh. Nice tile, Dang. baby. That is exhausting. Dude, isn't it? <laughs> Golly. That will wear your arm out. Another nice blue. Nice. You got this. Mm, right. <laughs> <laughs> like you're getting ready for an Olympic dive or something. <laughs> He's on. Fish on. Five hundred sixty feet left. You got it. <laughs> go, baby, go. <laughs> Sorry, already getting tired. You got to keep going because it'll cut. You, that's how it'll come off. If it's easier, you pop them in the rod holder right here. Put it in the thing. Just need to catch a breath here, y'all. 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 Hand cranking one of these is about enough you'll ever want to do in a lifetime. <laughs> You gotta guide that line a little bit. Okay, well that's gonna be second nature. <coughs> second nature. Don't let them win, you gotta get them. This is your dinner. I think, you I think she's committed. I think you got it. She's like, I'm not sharing the glory now. <laughs> yeah, you, you got it. Oh, look. Oh, we got color. <laughs> wow. There you go. Woo. Keep coming. Scam over to me. Nice blue line tile. Man, that's a broke sweat. Hold him up. On the hand crank. Woo! 580 feet. Look at us go. We are getting there. Beautiful blue line tiles. A lot of you guys have been asking about uh, my deep drop rigs and whatnot. Um, they're probably one of the easiest things to make on the planet. I buy all my stuff from Cudjo Sales and Summerlin. Um, pretty much the majority of my rigs are two to 300 pound mono. I do four hooks on them. Um, I use these little swivels. I don't know what they're actually called. Uh, sleeve swivel. Cudjo Sales, I buy all this stuff. Crimps mono. Um, if I'm fishing snowies, I'm fishing a 14-0 or bigger circle hook. And if I'm fishing the blue lines, snowies and goldens, I'll say. If I'm fishing blue lines, I'm fishing that small 11-0 circle. Um, this is a hand tied one, but this is what even the big mono ones look like. I mean, there's no, there's no secret recipe for length or, or length of the legs or amount of hooks. Um, and quite honestly, uh, we don't even fish with a light very often. Everyone says no light, no bite. But if you think about it, those fish got as big as they are without your light. So, but that's how I do it. Not the right way, just my way. Is he on there? Yeah. You might have something bigger. Oh yeah. Are you stuck in the bottom? I don't know what's happening. Keep reeling. Uh, oh, oh yeah, he might be stuck. Yeah. Okay, got him out of the rock. <laughs> Whatever it was was wrapped around the bottom. Looky there. Nice one. Dang. We're all in the club. Everybody got a blue line. So we just put a whacking on the blue tiles. Five nice ones. Um, so I'm actually gonna switch this rig over to uh, some bigger hooks. Still gonna fish 50 or uh, 60 pound fluoro. Just gonna put the bigger hooks on and bigger baits and hopefully find us a snowy grouper. And instead of little chunks, I'm gonna use whole bigger squid. If, I, if you can find them, the bigger the squid, 
the better. Snowy's like a whole squid, typically. Let's go. So this is a different spot we're gonna try for snowies. There's a pretty big ledge right there you can see. Um, I'm drifting real slow over the top of it, but you can see all the bait. Ton of life right there. So we're gonna do a drop right on top of all that life. See if we can locate one of these snowy groupers. Big baits are going down. Throw me a neutral, babe. I think that's our snowy. Ooh, yeah. I think that's him, Clayton. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Get your greasy chicken fingers ready. Yeah. Switch it into low gear. Ooh. So it's like. Go, baby, go! Alright, I'm passing it off. Oh, whoo! That burns. So I think we got a snowy on. I had to pass it off. My arms aren't built for this. I'm used to driving the boat. Teamwork on this one. It felt like a snowy. Big hit. Fought for about the first 100 feet or so, and it kind of just feels like dead weight now. It's not acting like a tile, so I think we might have the right one here. So like I said, this is that spot. Tons of bait on this, just unreal. Big ledge, tons of bait on top on the shallow side. Um, I had to tag team this one, just a little heavier. Didn't feel like a monster, but it did feel like a snowy. It's coming up. Yeah, baby. Woo! Oh, it's a yellow, yellow. edge. Nice. Look at that. Oh. Come here, buddy. Look at that. You hold this? Yep. Wow. So this is a rare treat. Dude, I saw the yellow on the, I saw a, a little glint of yellow yeah. on the way up and I didn't want to jump the gun, but. Look at that. Yeah. That yellow edge. This is probably the best of the deep water groupers. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, in the snowy family. Ooh. Here, step down here. Can we get a better shot of them? Yellow all across the fins there. That is awesome. Killer fish. Woo! But we've got plenty. Like I said, we're not doing this commercially. I think that's going to be probably a wrap for us. Head head in, maybe. Might do some light snorkeling on the way in, but um, I think I'm going to do a catch and cook with that yellow edge. That's not something we see every day, so I'd like to show you guys how you how we uh, how we cook that up. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I'm in the kitchen. We're gonna cook some stuff up. We've got that yellow edge grouper from today. Um, I'm not gonna lie, there's a couple pieces of snowy. I think these three are snowy um, from a previous trip, but we got yellow edge grouper. Uh, I'm gonna show you a recipe my good friend, Matt Conrad, the best deep dropper in all of North Texas taught me. Um, I didn't, this is not mine, this is his, thanks Matt. I'm gonna share it with the world. So we're gonna get a cast iron skillet, smoking hot, as hot as you can get it. Um, Matt's words to you where you think it's gonna burn the house down. So cast iron's coming up. Um, on these fillets, I literally have, these are probably an inch and a half thick maybe. I have literally salt and pepper, that is it. And uh, in the pan, I've got olive oil. Oven is preheated to 400. When this pan gets ready, I'll show you what we do. When I say smoking hot, that's what I mean, smoking hot. So take these fillets, pretty much I'm charring them on each side. I've got a little too many for the pan, so I'm gonna do a couple and then uh, switch it over to this guy. But typically I do just the pan. I'm cooking for a few extra people today. See how quick that is start to burn on the edge there? Not burn, but crisp up on the edge there. About 20, 30 seconds on each side. And then I'm going straight into the oven. <laughs> nice little crunch right there is all you want. Pretty much it just holds that moisture in there, from what I'm told. I don't know. Alright, so those are about ready to go in the oven. Last step. Little dollop of 
butter or country crock if you prefer. All right, we're live. In the kitchen. See when the fillets start to crumble there a little bit. Ten minutes on that size is pretty, pretty spectacular. Oh, my goodness! Thanks, Matt. Thanks for next time. Whatever. <clears throat> oh, baby. <laughs> Look at that. Unreal. All right, guys. That's all I got. Paired with some homemade Benihana rice. Almost like PB and J. But that's all I got this time, guys. Thanks for your time. Um, keep sending the ideas, having a lot of fun. I'm slammed with charters right now, but once I get a little slower, I'm gonna get back to the fun videos. And I'm right, like I said, I'm writing down all your ideas. Just can't get to them as fast as I'd like, but make sure to like, comment, and share, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for your time. Later. <laughs>